So I've been using my Alexa enabled Echo Dot for a long time now. In fact, check this out. Alexa, turn off studio lights. Dope, right? I know I'm really late to the party, but so far I've been really enjoying having a smart home. And I really love Alexa, but I haven't tried Google. And so when Google announced the brand new Nest Audio, I knew I had to pick it up. Hey, I'm Seth, and today I'm unboxing the brand new Google Nest Audio. Thanks so much for tuning in today. If you're new to the channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below, and also make sure to give me a follow on Instagram and on Twitter, at RealSethFowler. So up until this point, I've never had a Google smart home thing. I've always wanted one, but I've never actually pulled the trigger. And with the Nest Audio, it really seemed like something that was well-priced, it looked good, and it would fulfill a need, which is a speaker. And of course, as with all of my other videos on this channel, if you would like to check out the product that we're talking about in today's video, I've left an affiliate link to that product in the description below. So the Nest Audio is Google's latest smart speaker and it retails for a price of just 99 bucks. In addition to it being a bookshelf style sneaker, it has all the Hey Google smart functionality that you would expect from a Google device. And according to Google's website, this speaker has been updated in a couple different ways that should make it the best Google smart speaker yet. So let's open it up, let's see how it is, let's test it for ourselves and find out if it's worth the 99 bucks. I'm personally really excited about the sound quality. I want to hear how good it actually is. I'm not expecting greatness, but I'm not expecting it to be bad. I want it to sound decent and fill up a room about this size, which is about 9 feet by 10 feet. <laughs> so on the front of the box, you've got an image of the smart speaker itself. It comes in a couple different colors. I went for the gray color because I felt like that was the most versatile, at least with my setup and my decor. On one side of the box, you've got a couple of the Hey Google commands, if you're not familiar with them. I'm not totally familiar with them because I've never used Hey Google before. I mean, I have Android phones, but I just never use that feature. In the same way, I don't use Siri on my phone. I very rarely use it unless I'm driving. But I mean, it would be nice to say something like, Hey Google, play the latest Avoca album and have it play it rather than having to pull it up on my phone and then sync it with the speaker. So to be honest, that's the main reason I'm excited about this speaker, being able to say, Hey, play the latest episode of whatever podcast I'm listening to or finish the track that I was listening to earlier or whatever. And yeah, I know the Echo Dot can do that, but the speaker on that thing sucks. So the fact that this is apparently a good sounding device in such a nice small form factor really makes me excited. On the other side of the box, you've got some marketing information about the speaker that says, fill the room with crisp vocals and rich bass from the built-in tweeter and woofer. Ask your Google Assistant to stream your favorite music, news, radio, and more. Check the weather, make calls, set alarms and timers, blah, 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 we all know what it can do. And then on the back of the box, you've got a nice image with the Google Nest Audio set up in this very nicely staged setup, which is way nicer looking than really any part of my house. So off the bat, kind of setting unreal expectations with this guy, but it is what it is. So it looks like the way that you open this is pull the bottom flap and then kind of open it up like this. Ooh. And there it is. A lot more unassuming than I was expecting. I don't know what I was expecting, but it looks a lot simpler and cleaner than I thought it would. Probably shouldn't be doing this, but it's got some heft to it too, which I like. It's not going to be easily knocked over. Yeah, pretty sturdy. And then inside the rest of the box, we've also got some presumably instructions right here. The Let's Get Started guide right here at the bottom of the box, which has your support information, touch controls, etc. And then you've also got on the bottom of the box right here, your wall work, which is important because I do not believe the speaker comes with a battery. So let me plug this into the wall and we'll get it all set up and see how it sounds. So the power input on the new Nest Audio is on the back of the device in the bottom right hand corner. You just plug in this power cord right here. And just above that, you've got your Google logo and you've also got this mic mute button right up here near the top. Actually, to be fair, it's not a button, it's a slider, but you get the gist. So now we've got it all plugged in. Let's see if we can get it working. Oh. There we go. Okay, so I've got the Google Home app already downloaded. Google Home, there we go. I have it for Chromecast, so it makes sense. Pretty easy setup so far. I mean, I wouldn't expect anything less, but impressed that it knew there was a Nest Audio right next to it. I mean, I guess that's just Bluetooth for you, but it is what it is. <laughs> I did hear the sound, yes, thank you. Shoot, I always hate this part of the video because I never remember my Wi-Fi password. I should make it something stupid simple, but I don't want anyone stealing my Wi-Fi. Not that they would because now everyone has Wi-Fi. It's not 2006 anymore, but you know. <laughs> now while this is setting up, we can take a brief look at the speaker itself and the generally minimal aesthetic of this speaker. The outer fabric cover of the device is made up of 70% recycled materials, which I think is really cool. Obviously it's not a huge portion of the device, but I still think that's cool that they're at least trying to use recycled materials. On the bottom of the device, you've got this soft white rubber mat foot, which really stops the device from kind of sliding around, which is of course a good thing. And size wise, it's about seven inches tall, which is almost the same size as my iPhone Pro Max. You can see it right next to each other, just kind of 
give you a sense of scale. Now, when it comes to actually using and controlling your Nest Audio, there are multiple ways to do it. Obviously, you can use your voice, you can use your phone, but you can also use the touch sensitive buttons on the top of the device, which you can actually see. You can actually turn down the volume of the device by tapping the front left hand side like this, and then turn up the volume by pressing the other side like this. And then if you tap the center of the device, it'll play or pause your music. I actually haven't played anything on this, so I'm not sure what'll happen when I click that button, but let's find out. Nothing, because it's not updated yet, so that makes sense. But other than that, there's not really any other ways to control your Google Nest Audio, which isn't a huge deal, because what other controls do you really need to give your speaker? Your speaker is finally ready. Here we go, let's test it out. Hi, I'm your Google Assistant. It's great to meet you. There are a lot of ways I can help you get things done. Let's try a few. There or if go. you already know your way around, just say, I'm done. I'm done. First, we'll play a short music clip. If I do that, this video is going to get demonetized, so I'm not going to do that. Do you want to know what it means when your video gets demonetized? <laughs> no, I, I'm well aware of what it means, Google. You own YouTube. You know. Oh. Nope, that's going to get me demonetized. You should know that, Google. Okay, let's... I think uh... you want to resume. Is that right? No. No, it she's trying to take down my channel. Video. What the hell, Google? For instance, try asking about the weather. Hey, Google, what's the weather like? Currently in Philadelphia, it's 68 degrees and partly cloudy. That's true. Good job. Okay, let's get back to the tutorial. No, I'm done with the tutorial. Here's a station based on copyright free music, Multi Imperium. Okay. Hey, Google, turn up volume all the way. Hey Google, turn down volume to half volume. Hey Google, turn up volume to 75%. I'm impressed. I'm actually really impressed. It's not the best sounding audio I've ever heard, not by a long shot. The bass is decent, the highs are decent, the mid range is decent, but at the end of the day, it's a $99 smart speaker. So it's gonna sound good enough for people who aren't audiophiles. And to be honest with you, that's kind of me. Although I make music and I love making music and listening to music, I'm not gonna stress over the sound quality of something when it only costs 99 bucks and it's gonna be sitting in my office and I'm gonna be mainly using it to listen to podcasts. So that's the main that's the main reason I bought this, to listen to podcasts, and so the audio doesn't need to be incredible, but for someone who wants a decent sounding speaker with smart functionality, this is a really solid way to go, especially for only 100 bucks. According to Google, this Nest Audio is 75% louder and has 50% more bass than the original Google Home, which I would understand because that speaker, again, kind of sucked. Apparently, inside this little package, you've got a 19mm tweeter for the highs, and then you've got a 75mm midwoofer for the lows and the bass. So it should, in theory, sound significantly better than the original Google Home's 50mm full-range driver. Apparently there's active EQ adjustment to fit with the song or the media that you're listening to, which is a welcome addition. And a standout feature, which I would love to try, but unfortunately only bought one, is that if you actually buy two of these devices, you can create a stereo speaker setup. According to Google, the devices pair very quickly and it's a very easy setup process. So in my opinion, the Google Nest Audio is a solid mid-range smart speaker that costs $99 and has some pretty solid sound quality. If you've used Google's Assistant in the past, this doesn't have any new features, it's just essentially a new speaker tacked on to the standard old Google Assistant, which for most people isn't a bad thing, especially if you're like me and you've never had Google Assistant before. But if you already do have some Google Home devices and you're fine with the speaker quality, this one probably isn't a necessary upgrade. Personally, I'm really excited about the Google Nest Audio. I think it's a nice looking device. I think it sounds good. The price is not too bad and Google Assistant seems like a pretty decent assistant. But now I would love to know your thoughts on the Google Nest Audio and whether you'd ever consider picking one up. So let me know in the comment section down below. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you all in the next one.